Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to the Reckless Podcast. Thank you guys for joining us. Tony, how are you feeling over there? You good? Good. Good, good, good. We took his mic from him, so he has to yell now. That's why he had the good scotch. That's what's up. Uh, and we get to try something that I absolutely know nothing about, which is always my favorite. Uh, I like to learn with you guys. Uh, so we have Lance Winters here. Hello. Hello, hello. And you are the master man, myth, the legend behind this uh, good stuff here? It's, uh, part of that's right, yeah. Part of it's right? Master distiller at St. George Spirits. Uh, been there for 22 of its 36 years. Wow, man. So you are the man, the myth, the legend. Come on, 22 years of it, you did it. Okay. So you're, like I tell people, if people come here, it's my fault. Yeah, if, if you're saying it, it's got to be true. So I'm going to take it. <laughs> I heard that once before, and then everybody said I lied. I don't know what happened. <laughs> it was all there. And then joining him with us, uh, gracing our presence, is the lovely Miss Erica. Hello. How are Thanks you? Thanks for having me. Good. Thank you for covering your knees so we can all focus. I yeah, appreciate you're that. welcome. <laughs> uh, how are you doing? I'm doing doing great, Good. actually. Yeah, I got to run around with this guy all day and uh, just learn from all the wisdom that he's projecting out on the world. Oh, so. Jesus, man. I saw his head swell right as you said yeah, that. Yeah, he his... might have trouble getting out the door after this. but uh, that's I, all right. I'm not really sure that I want to get out the door. <laughs> yeah, well, good point, good point. So so what, what's going on here, man? I, I absolutely know nothing about your company. I know nothing about you, which is nothing personal. I just haven't heard it. That just means Erica's not doing her job, right? Yeah. No, that's, uh, uh, you hear that slam? That yeah, was good, dude. Day number two of that story. But, uh, uh, <laughs> so tell me, you brought, you brought this upon yourself. Yeah, you're right. Well, I like okay. to do that. That's okay. That's okay. So tell me, tell me what you got here and what, what it is your distillery is at first shot, and then we'll go into everything else, man. All right. Well, let's, let's start with who St. George Spirits is. So we are a 36-year-old distillery. Um, when St. George first started, there were no craft distilleries. The category craft distilling didn't exist. It was just uh, some idiotic people who started a small distillery had no business doing that. Well, yeah, I think that's still what craft is. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> if, you, if you're faking it till you make it, you're called craft bar. Yeah, there you go. Well, this is, this is one where our founder, a guy named Jörg Rupf, came to the United States from Germany. His family had been generations of distillers from the Black Forest. They made brandies from fruit called Eau de Vie. Uh, pear, raspberry, cherry. Ooh, there's that O to V again, Tony. I, I told him, we had, last time I heard this was with Louis Trey here, and he said that, and I was like, I'm going to get it tattooed on my neck. O now v. that I heard it twice, one more time, person saying it, and it's over, dude. Beetlejuice. O to V. Either that or right below my belt. Uh, oh. <laughs> we'll see, whatever works out best. Something that translates as water of life water. from below your belt. I'm, I'm not really sure about that Just one. Just depends who you give it to. I don't know if yeah. I would drink from that fountain. <laughs> hey, well, you know, I'm married now. We can't, you know, we can't go there. That's how it is. That's how it goes. It's early yet. Uh, <laughs> So. All right, O to V, I'm sorry that took me off track. Well, it focused me. It focused me. I'm going to do that. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm off track now because I'm thinking about that tattoo. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, it's not, never going to scrub away. I will try drinking that away before the day is out. We'll get to that. Uh, but, uh, but when you think about O to V when it's well made, it's something that it preserves all the things that you love about a piece of fruit and locks it away forever. So if you love the way this year's harvest of Bartlett pears smells, the only way that you can lock away a photograph of that smell and that flavor is with eau de vie. You can make a cider from it, but that cider is not going to last very long because the alcohol content and the acidity of a cider is, is not going to protect it for very long. But once you've distilled it, it's a drinkable perfume that, that reads just like the most beautiful aspects of the pears. We get rid of all the, the stupid stuff like vitamins and dietary fiber, all the things yeah, we want that we really nutritional need. value, right? Exactly. You're talking about just the essence, like almost like if you take an essence of the oil, right? Yep. Is that the same principle? It's a pure essence. That's cool. exactly it. So, and, and that forms the foundation of what we do at the distillery. Um, when I showed up 22 years ago, I had been a brewer and I had, uh, I had seen what all the different roast levels of barley do to make different beers different. Uh, and I knew that nobody was doing that in the whiskey world at the time. And uh, I mean, it, it, it even took uh, Glenmorangie years to actually right. get to that place. So, um, so when I showed up at the distillery, we started uh, playing around with distilling different beer styles and seeing what contributions those different roast levels would make and started laying down whiskey uh, about two years after I got there. So we've been making whiskey at St. George for 20 years. We've got whiskeys that are out in bottle right now that are eight and 10 years old on average. Um, and they're, they're lovely. They've got that chocolate. They've got the things that, that you like that you would consider a breakfast whiskey. Um, yeah, it's, it's crazy. And, and this is still new to me. I mean, and eight to 10 years is still pretty young, right? It's, I mean, it's it, enough to develop crazy flavor, I know, but. Well, I mean, here's our approach on this. Think about an eau de vie. Eau de vie doesn't get aged, and it's got crazy flavors developed because of the care that you put into the raw materials, both the selection 
and then the handling of them through the fermentation process. So you can do that same thing with, with brewing ingredients, with grains, and develop a metric shit ton of flavor like right up front. And you don't have to rely on barrel aging to do that. And if you're thoughtful in the way that you distill it, and don't get greedy about making sure that you've got lots and lots of product that's coming over in the still, you can have something that's soft and beautiful and approachable right off the still. And you're just looking for, for nuances and further flavor development over time in the barrel. Yeah, see, I, you know, that, that's crazy. I started, that, that same theory applies with food. I mean, I, I've been cooking for, yeah, too long. Too long, man, too long. Uh, and, and, you know, I got introduced to the sous vide process way later into my cooking career. And sous vide is kind of that same principle, right? Like, how do I impact so many things into one place without long periods of time? People say, oh, you need to roast this, or you need to cook this, or age this uh, 24 hours, 64 hours in an oven, right? Yeah. Really, it's not true. I can put it into a bag, I can take all the oxygen out, I can infuse all kinds of things into that meat, give it four hours into a water bath just to high above room temperature, and next thing you know, it tastes like it's aged for 10 years, Yeah. right? And, and, and that whole process, people are like, oh, it's fake. It's not fake. It's smart <laughs> right i mean it's a it really is kind of the right way to do it if you want to be productive and you want to not wait 15 years to maybe have a fucked up product right and, and, but here's the thing who calls that fake people who are stuck in traditional ruts absolutely you know and and somebody like you sees it as evolution oh 100 percent. and and a tr even even the traditions that these people who are stuck in traditional ruts have at one point, those traditions were innovations. So this is this is what we're talking about. This is, this is what St. George is here to do. We're here to create the things that'll be traditions for the future. Our, innov our innovations hopefully aren't things that are stupid and trendy, um, like, well, that, food, like food towers or <laughs> shit like that. Yeah, it's, dude, if I have to eat anything off a damn spoon again, I'll kill somebody, dude. I swear to God, don't force me to me shit on a spoon at a wedding, right? I mean, I know what you're talking about for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's what we're about, and we wanna we wanna be able to to shift the dialogue on everything. We wanted to do that with uh, with whiskey, but the way that Jorg trained me to distill, I fell in love with all manner of distillates. So um, I see the distillery the way you see a kitchen. Um, I look at a lot of distillers and they make one thing and it's like if you walked into somebody's kitchen and they just made fucking sandwiches all day long. Right. They got a big beautiful kitchen with all kinds of tools and you've got all kinds of crazy abilities and all you're going to do is make sandwiches. Why? Yeah, I understand that completely. You get, you get bored. I would get bored to death with making the same product day in, day out. I, I want to make something that's great, that's got staying power, but as soon as I've developed something, I want to hand it off to the, the people on my production team and let them do that, and then I can go around and find something new that's going to be exciting for me. Yeah, I go to like I go to Chef Toys, and I, I walk around the aisles, and I look at stuff that I've never used before, and I buy it just so that I'll make new crap. <laughs> just so I'm like, now I have to use this thing. What do I do now, right? And like, then out of that comes this whole spawn of like new ideas and crazy. Not because I needed to, but because now I have this thing. But but in a way, you do need to not not for your business, but for your own personal professional growth. And that's again, that's one of the things that we totally totally get off on is being able to find new ways to challenge ourselves and inspire ourselves. It's the Frankenstein of the business, man. If if you're doing it right, and I believe that. And like I said, I've never heard of you before, but. Uh, um, but it, this is this. The more is awesome, times you so say brave. it, the less it hurts. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, later on we'll run around naked. We'll call it even. It'll be good. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, dude. It's all good. A couple more uh, booze shots. We'll be good to go. God, it's just like last night all over. Again. Yeah. Right. 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 So, so Erica, come on, give me some feedback on this. First of all, you had to put up with him for a couple of days, right? Uh, yes. He sounds is, like a good deal, though. So far, not so bad. It's not bad. He's a great guy, and um, I get to really hear the inside story of the distillery so i knew about saint george spirits i've been selling it i've been with young's market now for seven years she says that but i've never heard of you mm. i'm gonna keep digging i think you it's are fun, you're man. digging you're digging <laughs> so, i'm also giving you props you're here now so <laughs> i'm pretty solid it's okay so uh yeah i've been selling the product for seven years but now working with lance and seeing the inside and kind of workings of his brain and how a lot of these products came yeah. about yeah right it's really cool to see the artistry it, that goes on in the distillery so um with the i do i do sound so corny with the wide array of products that he wow. creates you've been trained well by somebody <laughs> with the giant genre and the sea of good things well this you go fantastic. from everything from absinthe to vodka there's a you know an aperitif in there some gins whiskeys and um liqueurs and brandies and uh everything is made with such care and every spirit turns out to be beautiful so uh, I'm excited to see what you think when you taste. 
Oh, I have to think now. Jeez. Mm. No, that's that's the beauty of this. Hopefully you don't have to think. Hopefully you can just react. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I mean, I, you know, my, 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 my palette's based on uh, a bunch of different things over the, over the years, and uh, it's by no means tuned to fine or good or, you know, I, you know, the great thing about this show and what we do is that we'd like to try everything. It's like, I don't care cost point. I don't care if it's just fancy or not fancy. There's good at every level, and there's a place for everything. And, um, you know, I, I, I love crafty stuff. I love high-end stuff at some level. Sometimes I think high-end stuffs are a waste. Uh, beers I like at all level. IPs have their place. You know, coffee stouts have their place. Everything has its genre. Um, and what's cool is that, uh, like, we, like, we, I'm not a, I, I never known much about Dickel. We had him on the show. And I really enjoy that. I can't believe the price point on that, on that booze. And it's very smooth. Um, am I going to put it up there with these crazy wild 17 note, <laughs> you know, huge boozes? Absolutely not. But for drinkability at 12 bucks, like, man, that is solid, you know? So yeah. I learned something new with everything you got. So what all, uh, what all did you bring today for us to try? Let's talk about that and then we'll take a break. We'll come back and we'll drink up some booze, man. We brought in what we would consider just a very, very small sliver of our whole portfolio. It's cool. All tip of the iceberg. Uh, part of what I wanted to do here was I, I heard you talking earlier and you were talking about you don't like vodka. So we'll start with vodka. Perfect. Uh, and the reason I say that, the reason I say that is because vodka to me is like a wash up. It's like, it's like me putting butter in something. Yeah. So if you're making a cock, if I'm making something, I'm like, oh, it needs something. I'll throw a pat of butter and some salt in it and you're done right i mean it's always a win but what's the unique quality i see it, the right? butter as a cut above that really really uh, <laughs> because I'm, I'm a huge sucker for butter but uh, but i'll tell you that um, um let's come back real quick sure. to to the whole idea of thinking when you're drinking um and i i want to be able to make things that you know somebody could if they wanted to sit and think about and dissect but we all have the same palettes we just don't all have access to the same descriptors for our palates. Yeah. Um, we've all evolved over millions of years to be able to taste things for our own good. And so every single person can know the difference between good and not good. And if you have to describe why something is good, it's not fucking it's, good. It's not that good. It's yeah. not good. It's emperor new, emperor's new clothes sort of a thing. Uh, if you taste it though, and you're like, wow, what was that? I loved that. That's, that's what this is about. And we want to be able to get to people who don't necessarily put wax in their mustaches or wear arm garters. <laughs> um, you know, those, I love that. those bartenders are great too at what they're doing, but I want to be able to have I, my mom, uh, you know, I grew up in a town, Fremont in the South Bay. It's taken me years of therapy to just come out and say that. Uh, <laughs> and it's this, it's this crappy little, unless uh, if the mayor of Fremont is listening right now, I didn't mean crappy. Uh, yeah, it, he did. It's, it's a, <laughs> no lie. Yeah. Even if you are listening, Sleep, <laughs> sleepy little town of strip malls. Yeah. And, uh, and there really wasn't a whole lot to offer there. And I can put this stuff in front of my mom, in front of my friends from home, and they're still like, wow, I get this. And it's not because they all sit around and geek out about spirits. It's because we put stuff into our spirits that make them taste really good in a way that you can relate to them on a human level. Yeah, I, I, I dig that, man. I, uh, with, food, with food, it's the same principle. I, I like, I, you know, I got into fancy food for a minute and a half. Literally, I think it was a minute and a half, and all this artistic like splatter on the plate and all these things. And really, when I looked at it, I was like, that looks like art, not like food. So when I go to these places, I pay a bunch of money, and it's like designed all well, I think to myself, but I don't really want to eat it. Yeah. What did I come here for, right? So uh, I'm the same principle. I wanted, I wanted things, and I like things that way. You can put it in front of people like, mm, that's good. That looks good. I want to eat that. Yeah. And, and that's the principle of what I think you're talking about is more like, what's the approachability of this? Like, in general, is it good? Yeah. Not like, did I do this and have to explain it? And la, 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 and Foofy and Tinkerbells and, you yeah, know. If you if you can explain it and somebody can hear it and it makes it enhances their enjoyment of it great but if you if you have to explain it for them to enjoy it from the beginning you've lost the game yep so. i agree man all right well let's uh let's wrap this up we're gonna come back Are you ready to drink some stuff we got some glasses out i can't wait yeah me neither man thank you for the reckless podcast we'll be right back to drink some booze mm -hmm.